Okay, in this video, we're going to compare um, angle bisectors and perpendicular bisectors and talk about some of the characteristics that are similar for each, um, but there are also some distinguishing uh, marks, remarks, okay? So let's start with this side here. Remember that an angle bisector takes an angle and cuts it into two equal halves, right? So here's my angle right here, so that this resulting angle is the same as this resulting angle, all right? And same thing with this one, same thing with this one. Now, if you took angle bisectors for a triangle, the point where they meet is called the in-center, okay? The point where the angle bisectors meet in a triangle, right, cutting everything into equal halves, and I put two there because that means that that one's equal, and then that one is equal to that one, and you make a distinguish from that one. This is called the in center, the point where they all three meet, okay? Now that's called an angle bisector, right? Let's go ahead and write that down. Now, that's different from a perpendicular bisector. By the way, this is a symbol for perpendicular. Sometimes instead of writing it all out, you'll see this written instead. Now, a perpendicular bisector actually starts in the middle of the side of a triangle. Remember, that's the difference. This one's an angle. This one's actually for the side. And it forms a 90-degree angle, all right? With the, um, with the line inside itself. The other thing that it does is it creates two equal halves on either side. So this is actually like the midpoint of the side. So that this segment here would be equal to that segment here. This segment would be equal to this segment. This segment here put three marks, is equal to this segment here. And again, remember, put a number of marks so that you know that it's different from these other sides. Now, the difference here is that this, where the um, perpendicular bisectors all meet, is called the circumcenter. Circumcenter, or the point of congruency, okay? Point of concurrency, excuse me, currency. <clears throat> now notice what I said. The um, perpendicular bisector cuts the side into two equal halves, forms a perpendicular angle, okay, with the side, and the other last characteristic here is at this point is equidistant from each of the vertices, okay? So the circumcenter is equidistant from each of the vertices. Okay of the triangle, okay? Now, with the angle bisector, the in-center, okay, actually just forms equal lengths from each of the vertices, okay? So it's basically the same idea. Form equal lengths from each of the vertices, okay? The in-center, forms equal lengths. Oh, I didn't, not from the vertices, excuse me. Equal lengths from the side. There we go. That's bad. I need to erase that. Just one second. Let me take these out. All right, there we go. Easy mistake to make. Okay, so 
that the in-center is equally distant from each of the sides of the triangle. Okay, so this length here is equal to this length here is equal to that length there. So the inter forms equal lengths from the in-center to the sides of the triangle. Okay? I hope that was helpful. Um, you can see how this might, uh, by knowing where the in center is, you might be able to, like, for example, create, um, you know, points of congruency with between different triangles. For example, I have, like, an angle here and a side here. Uh, that, that's information you can start to gather with the uh, perpendicular bisectors. I know, for example, one of the angles is the same with another. These are different congruent triangles, right? So this side is side, same as this side, so remember angle side. So there's a number of ways of taking this information and creating the rest of the angles and sides in the triangle. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you.